Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to carry out the chemical tests for carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Now this is a required practical and it contains a lot of detail. The key things you need to learn are the chemicals used to test for each food group and the positive results. Try not to get too bogged down with specific volumes of chemicals. I should point out that all of the chemicals on these tests are potentially hazardous, so safety goggles must be worn. OK, so first we take our food sample and grind this with some distilled water using a mortar and pestle. We want to make a paste. We then transfer the paste to a beaker and we add more distilled water. We now stir this so the chemicals in the food dissolve in the water. Next we filter the solution to remove suspended food particles. At this stage we can now test our solution for the chemicals present. We're going to start by testing for carbohydrates. Carbohydrates include starch and also sugars such as glucose. To test for starch, we place 2 cm cubed of our food solution into a test tube. We then add a few drops of iodine solution, which is an orange colour. If starch is present, then the iodine solution will turn blue-black. However, if there's no starch present, then the iodine solution will stay orange. Now testing for sugar such as glucose is a bit more tricky. Again, we start with 2 cm cubed of our food solution. We then add 10 drops of Benedict solution, which is a blue colour. We place the test tube containing our solutions into a beaker, and we half fill the beaker with hot water from a kettle. We now leave this for around 5 minutes. If sugars are present, then the Benedict solution will change colour. The colour of the Benedict solution gives us an approximate idea of the amount of sugar present, but it cannot tell us the exact amount. A green colour tells us that there's a small amount of sugar. A yellow colour tells us that there's more sugar present. And a brick red colour tells us that there's a lot of sugar present. Now the Benedict's test only works for certain sugars such as glucose. Scientists call these reducing sugars. The Benedict's test will not work for sugars which are non-reducing, for example sucrose. Coming up, we'll see how to test for proteins and for lipids. OK, let's look now at how to test for protein. To do this test, we take 2 cm cubed of our food solution and we add 2 cm cubed of biuret solution, which is a blue colour. If protein is present, then the biuret solution will change from blue to a purple or lilac colour. OK, the final test we're going to look at is for lipids or fats. Now, in this test, just like before, we grind our food with distilled water using a mortar and pestle. However, unlike the other tests, we do not filter the solution when testing for lipids, and that's because lipid molecules can stick to filter paper. OK, so first we transfer 2 cm cubed of our food solution to a test tube. We then add a few drops of distilled water and a few drops of ethanol. We then gently shake the solution. If lipids are present, then a white cloudy emulsion forms. Now you need to remember that ethanol is highly flammable, so it's very important that no naked flames are present. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on testing for the chemicals in foods in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.